Okay, next up is Heidi Waterhouse. Um, she's a transformation advocate at Launch Darkly. Um, um, she's going to be talking about docs for developers and how to start, or how to start when everything is hard. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Christoph. Good to see you again. You have an amazing setup. This is awesome. They change when I touch them. That's so cool. <laughs> That's really, really cool. Now you all know what to ask for Christmas. <laughs> yes, if you're a like if you're a transformation advocate, that's a, also a really cool title. Um, I'm going to give the stage to you, Heidi. Um, I'm really looking forward to what you've got to share today. Excellent. Well, like Christoph said, this this talk is about docs for developers. My name is Heidi Waterhouse. I work at LaunchDarkly. We do feature flags as a service, and this talk has nothing to do with that. Let's see if I can use my slide advance. No, okay. So who am I? I am frequently on the road talking about DevOps and feature management and feature flags and progressive delivery, but this talk is about my first career, my first love, technical writing. And what I am is part of a crew of people who got together over the pandemic and wrote a book about how to write documents, how to write technical documents. And I was super honored and pleased to be part of this. I'm the corgi with the pink hair, you might have guessed. Uh, Jared Boddy, Zach Carison, Dave Nunez, and Jen Lambord, and I all worked for a couple of years to put together the book that we think people needed, which is, I am not a technical writer. I don't really want to be a technical writer. I am a developer who needs to understand the bare minimum because nobody is hiring me a technical writer. And so if you're stuck in that place, this is the book we wrote for you. And I'm gonna summarize some of the many, many things we put in the book. Who are you? your people who care about your APIs, your people who care about this sort of novel hybrid communication slash programming method that we've devised for talking to programs and each other in both a machine readable and human readable way. And that's pretty amazing, honestly, when you think about it, APIs are so cool. I've been in the industry so long that I remember when we started using SOAP APIs, let alone REST APIs, let alone GraphQL. And all along, the focus has been on how do we communicate the cool things that our software does in a way that makes it usable for other people. So you're a person who cares about making your software usable for other people. Who is your audience? Who is it that you are imagining reading these documents? If you're not a writer, this seems like a funny place to start because what you know is the things that you've already created. But what I've found over decades of writing is that if I don't have a visual image of, of who I'm writing for, if I don't really know who I'm writing for, I get really stuck. I, I can't progress because I don't know how to help them. If you have a toddler, you help them zip up their winter jacket. It's winter in Minnesota. I can't do the conversion right now, but it was 10 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday. You zip up your toddler's winter jacket, but you wouldn't do that for a coworker. In the same way, some people need a really friendly, hand-holdy introduction to your software and some people want just the facts. And so we need to be careful when we're writing that we are writing to the correct people, to the right level. What are you trying to do? For many years, the gold standard of API documentation was the Stripe documentation, precisely because it lets you just copy and paste queries out of the documentation. You entered your key, you looked something up, you got a runnable query, and you could do APIs that way. That was an amazing understanding of how people were using the documentation, not to read it, 
but to paste out of it. And once somebody had grasped that that was the value proposition of the documentation, they could drive toward that. When you understand what it is you're trying to do with your documentation, it all gets a lot easier to write because you're not trying to describe everything your product can do. You're trying to describe what someone wants to do today. There's a really great book called, I'm going to forget the name. I didn't put it in my notes. Um, Badass, Making Users Awesome by Kathy Sierra. And in it, she says, no one wants to be using software. We want to get money out of an ATM. We want to catch a Pokemon. We want to do something with our software. We never sit down in the morning and think, wow, if only I could type some lines of code. It's not what we're here for. And when you remember that people are trying to do things instead of just understand, it's easier to write for them. So I said that we got together to write this story. We also commissioned some adorable art and some of it had to get into our, our slides. But the story of this book is a bunch of people with decades and decades of experience in technical writing trying to understand what we knew that was valuable to pass on. And we had a lot of, I wouldn't say fights, we were a very collegial team. We had a lot of arguments about whether something was only useful if you were working at a large organization or was only useful if you were working at a small organization or whether we should include anything about localization and translation, which we regret, of, like, we left it out on purpose, but we regretted that we needed to. On the other hand, we really wanted to keep this book as compact and extensible as possible. So when we wrote this, the story is we sat down and thought about as many audiences as we could, and then we eliminated a lot of them. We eliminated everybody that was like us. Honestly, we eliminated most of the people who go to the Write the Docs conference. Those are not the people who needed this book. The people that we kept were the ones who got told to write documentation or realized they had to write documentation if they ever wanted to go on vacation. And that stripping down was so instructive for us as we wrote the book because we understood how much trouble it was, how hard it was to do. So the thing that we learned is you have to scope your work, especially if writing API descriptions is not your full-time job. You have to say, this is what is possible for this team to do. We cannot do more. We cannot take on overtime. We cannot perform miracles. This is all we can do. And when you scope your work like that, you make it really clear both what your team's priorities are and what the company's priorities are. If they say they want world-class API documentation that is all handwritten and none of it is machine generated, and there are two of you, something has to give. Those are not possible compatible requirements. So scope your work to what's possible when you get started. Start where it hurts most. This is something that I learned a long time ago, but it turns out it's also a sales technique. The best way to sell a person something is to figure out what hurts, what's bothering them, what their pain point is. And once you know that, you can tailor your approach to address that pain point. So the pain point very frequently for API documentation is not describing the endpoints at all because we can automate a lot of that. The pain point is frequently the, the logging in process or the pain point is the integrations process. Like how do you get this reference documentation to actually be useful? So don't start with what's easy for you. 
start with what hurts for other people. The goal is not award-winning documentation. It'd be great if you have the resources to do that, but most people who are doing documentation as a developer don't. The goal is good enough documentation. The goal is documentation so you can go on leave, so that you can onboard somebody with a minimum of fuss, so that your users can figure out how to make something work. It doesn't need to be beautiful. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be complete. It needs to be good enough for them to use the software. So I've given you a lot of things to think about, but let's walk through this in a slightly more concrete way. How are we going to do this? First, I want you to gather all of the loose documentation that you have lying around. It's in tickets, it's in Confluence pages, it's in emails, it's in run books, it's in Google Drive, it's all over the place. There is actually almost always a lot of documentation to work with. So gather that all up and look at what you have before you start writing it. It's a real temptation to just sit down and try and start from nothing, but you don't have to. You really do have a lot of things there already. Then you're going to triage what you have. Throw away the stuff that is no longer working and old. All of us have work wikis that have pages that say deprecated, do not use. Uh, maybe we should just remove those so that people don't use them. We need to figure out what's actually relevant and correct before we try and incorporate it. And then we need to write the interstitial parts, the parts that are missing between what we already have. Don't, at this point, try and make what you have better. Just try and put it all in the same place and connect it up. Check with your experts and with your users that what you've provided makes sense. It doesn't have to be, again, beautiful or perfect. It needs to be workable. It needs to be functional. If duct tape gets it done, use duct tape. Deliver. There's a bunch of really great platforms now for delivering IP, API documentation. That's gotten really easy. You can have static sites, you can have dynamic sites, you can have software integrations. Wherever it is, people need to know to look there first. And if you're documenting for an internal team, you all need to agree on what the single source of truth is. Because fragmented documentation doesn't do us a lot of good. And then finally, and most importantly, you really need to iterate on what you've done. The thing about documentation is that it's not done. There is no done state. There's only done for now. And so after you release something, you really need to let it soak and see what people think of it, and then gather their feedback, and sometimes your feedback, and make it better the next time. Because if you're not iterating on your process and on your documentation, it becomes less and less useful over time. So building that, that revisitation check in is really important to having useful documentation. There are times to get help. The reason that we chose not to write about localization and translation is because none of us had done it at large scale. And because if you're doing localization, frequently you have experts or you should have experts. And so we said, this can't be a priority for this book. There are lots of times in your process where you're going to hit something that isn't possible for you to do or possible for you to do efficiently. Like, can I write hand-coded HTML? Yes. Is that how I put out my documentation? No, because it's slow and I'm slow 
and it doesn't have everything that I need. In the same way, you're going to hit a point where your internal documentation, your API documentation needs a professional. Watch for that point and see if you can start making the case for it before it becomes an emergency. Because there are lots of things that you can't do. You probably can't learn to be a documentation expert in six months. You can't learn another language. I mean, you can learn another language, but probably not to technical fluency in six months. So look for the things that you're, that you're sort of breaking your heart trying to do that are outside of your scope, that are outside of your usefulness, and ask for help because we are all specialists in different things. We are all differently good at parts of this, and we don't all have to be great at every part. So be humble and modest and ask for help when you need it. I said that we wrote a book. It's called Docs for Developers, and it's about how to get started when you don't really know where to start. And we hope that'll be useful for you. I hope this has not been too much of a book pitch, but I think it's really interesting to think about all of the intersections of APIs and documentation and how we can make them better. Thank you for your time and attention, and I'll answer some questions now. Okay, thank, thank you for that, Haiti. Um, very, very clear talk. It, I like, <laughs> love, love the corgis. I just really love the corgis, especially the, the, the detail of like the, the laptop icon. That's also a corgi. It's just really, really cool. <laughs> um, uh, I'm looking if there's any questions yet from, so far not yet from the audience. Um, writing a book sounds like a, a huge undertaking, especially, I don't know, if, is, is it better to write books during the pandemic or is it worse? I don't know. It's my first uh, published book. It's really interesting. Uh, all of us have met at least one other person on the team, but none of us have met all of the team. So then you 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 kind of got the the you you got an interconnected system. You have like the the perfect system to get it to end up in a complex uh, outcome because <laughs> it's it's interconnected but not fully. Uh, exactly. Probably. <laughs> Lots of but, notes. Yeah. Did did how did you meet the the other authors? Was was it like um, write the docs? I knew Zach from Write the Docs. Uh, Zach knew Jared, Jared knew David. I forget how Jen came into it, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was all very, very, um, connected. Yeah. Um, but, and, um, if people would want to take away one single advice, like, you know, you're, you're, you're the API developer, you've just been tossed with, okay, sorry, we don't have money. Um, you have to write the docs now. What, what, would you, what would that advice be? Remember that you're not writing a description of what it does, but a description of what people need to do with it. It's the difference between this is a vegetable peeler and it has sharp edges and you use it to take the skin off the vegetables, and this is how you peel a carrot. Right. So remember that people are trying to use your documentation, your API, to do a thing, and write from that direction, not from everything that you know. And I think that actually connects with the previous talk about affordances. Very yes. much so, yes, because it's not, people don't come to use your API, they, they come to, do something with your API. And I think that's that's a really essential point. Um, but it makes it harder because you have to empathize with the people that are, are trying to do something with your API. It makes it harder, but it's going to drive better API design in the long run. Right. I think it's really easy for those of us who understand a product to try and communicate about the product 
And in my role as I say transformation advocate, frequently we, we parse this as developer advocate. In that role, my job is to understand what people are trying to do and take that back to the company. Uh, we recently ran a survey on how people are actually using feature flags and we're very surprised to learn that there are 10 times more permanent ops feature flags than there are rollout or deployment flags. We were surprised by how people are using our software. And that kind of information is so vital to writing good API documentation because how we think of what we made and how the outside world thinks of it are frequently very different. And actually, it's it's a testimony to, to the success of your product that people are using it for things that you didn't imagine before. It uh, really is. Yeah. Hang on a sec. Oh, no, it's going to run away. Okay. There was almost a cat bit cameo. <laughs> um, no corgis. I, we, I think we have a question from from cats um, uh, from the audience. Uh, do you have any tips for how we can get users engaged and referring to the docs rather than asking questions directly to a team? Uh, so there are a couple different methods. There's a a slightly sort of training punitive method where you never answer a question except with a link to documentation. And that's not wrong, but it's not, it doesn't feel very helpful. Yeah. It, it makes people feel like they've sort of been reprimanded and that's not yeah. usually the emotion we want them to take away. So if you have a big enough community, I think one of the really useful things to do is uh, set up and reward community mentors who will do that for you. Uh, if, if you've been around tech writing for a really long time, I used to belong to the Framers L mailing list for, for FrameMaker users. And all of the things that you couldn't find in the documentation, you could ask and they would send you a link to not just the FAQ, but like a specific part of the FAQ. And I think Adobe was paying them to be on that forum, but it was still less than they would be paying any kind of tech support person. Yeah, right. I hope I hope that answered the question. Um, I think so. How so, tra transfer? Well, I, I was intrigued by your title. Oh, here we go. We have a cameo. <laughs> this, is, this is Director Fury. <laughs> Um, so I was intrigued by by your title. Were, were you always a transformation? No, that's no. The same, you think? I changed it in the last year when I realized that I was talking less to developers and more to people who were had titles like vice president of DevOps transformation, right. or or people who were trying to move their enterprises to a more DevOps SRE continuous integration and deployment kind of direction. And there needs to be someone who isn't just talking to the developers, but the business users about mm -hmm. the business value of starting to increase the cadence of your releases. Uh, I picked transformation advocate because DevOps, uh, state of DevOps report, uh, fangirl doesn't fit as well on a business card. Okay. But but accelerate fangirl is is maybe another way to think of it. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you very much for doing this talk, Katie. And yes. uh, I hope to see you very soon. Again, yes. hopefully live someplace. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, and 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 uh, well, uh, good luck with the book and uh, we'll we'll talk soon. Thank you so much and thank you all for your time. Thanks.